Hello, football family. Welcome into Huddle It Up Films. Today I have Knox back with me, and we're here to talk about an undrafted guy who's come to the Ravens and a dark horse to make the roster, and that's Benjamin Victor. But first, Knox, can you please introduce yourself and tell people where they can find your work? Hey, what's up, Ravens flock? Um, Knox, Ravens Elite, Ravens 8 Elite. Um, that's my Twitter handle and also my Instagram handle as well. Um, just started a new podcast, Ravens 8 Elite football weather podcast with also uh jamil as well so yep just starting this off man just getting ready let's talk about benjamin nice man and i'll have the links to all knox's stuff you guys are going to love them if you heard uh we did one other episode already on coach williams but there's another guy that the ravens have brought in um who may have a chance to make this team he was one of the names that was buzzworthy in the the short otas and that's benjamin victor he went undrafted last year he bounced around. He was on the Giants practice squad, I believe. Didn't play in a game. And the Ravens mm -hmm. brought him in. But aside from the size that makes him attractive, there's there seems to be some kind of connection to him and the Ravens or some kind of cultural uh, fit that might be there. Can you talk about that for us, Knox? Yeah, you can basically, I mean, if you look at Benjamin Victor, he grew up in Pocono Beach, Florida. The same, same place where Lamar did. And uh, attended Coconut Creek High School in Florida as well. So that Florida connection that has been, you know, going through the whole organization, you can tell. Um, if you look at um, Tyler Huntley, he, he's from Florida as well. Obviously, Hollywood Brown from Florida as well. Um, they even brought in, I mean, because after the season, they, they signed him, Benjamin Victor, and Deion Kane, both from Florida. Uh, Dion came from Tampa, Florida. So, and then you, you know, you bring in a guy like Sammy Watkins from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So, I mean, the, that that Florida connection, you can almost sense the chemistry and the camaraderie between him and Lamar that they would have, you know, or even even the, you know, with Tyler Huntley, you know, that that Florida connection. So, I think that 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 played a pivotal role in the Ravens bringing him in. Well, I tell you what, it, it goes beyond just the comfort level as far as coming from the same spot, because the kids that come from there, like their games that are that they play as eight and 10 year olds are as big as mm -hmm. like the high school games around here. Like, right. There's right. a big spotlight on those kids. They get the best coaches down there. They play mm -hmm. year round. Um, they're mm -hmm. used to dealing with it as more than just like a hobby at a very young age. Like it's very important to the to the kids in Florida. Some of those some of those kids that play football. It's much bigger than anything we experience here in Baltimore, that's for sure. But um, but yeah, that's a, that's a great point. That's why I wanted to ask you about it first, because uh, mentality and just assist as far as like a organizational fit, as you know, the Ravens will bring in somebody that uh, equal talent. They want the guy that plays like a Raven. Yeah. And I mean, when you when you see a guy, you see a guy like Benjamin Victor, I mean, everybody, you know, was raving about the Julio and, you know, we need a big X, Y receiver and a huge guy. And when you look at this guy, I mean, they signed him at the end of the season um, and he's 6'4", you know, 200 pounds. I mean, that prototypical big X that you would be looking for. And not only that, um, T. Martin uh, in his introductory uh, conference, um, when they first asked him, you know, he and he asked about the guys that he likes. And T. Martin alluded to having guys that go above the rim. And above the rim is those guys that go up and get it. And guys that are just aggressive at the point of attack is catching the football. And that's what Benjamin Victor does. I mean, those 50-50 balls, you know, he's proven that he's willing to go up and <laughs> contort his body in whichever way and make sure that he catches those balls. So that's a, that's a good... That's definitely a good thing that the Ravens would be bringing him in for. And you guys know I'm a I'm, I'm a big draft nerd, and I looked a lot at Victor last um, last year in 2020. And of course, Ohio State always has athletes, uh, the McLarens and and all that. I, so I saw a bunch of Victor, and the one thing that I knew is it's not enough just to have a big body. It's just mm -hmm. like arm length on the offensive line. Yeah, this guy's got 34 inch arms, but he has no mm -hmm. idea what to do with them. He doesn't know how to use them. Benjamin Victor for a tall receiver has really good body control. He has a really good uh, time. He has really good timing in his routes, timing of his jumps. He knows how to look back for the ball, which is something that uh, some of our other receivers have had problems tracking the ball. Hollywood's obviously very good at it, but you know, you look at a guy like Boykin, um, Victor's the same height as Boykin, but he's a different style player. Like you can see Benjamin Victor being a true uh, red zone threat Knox. 
Yeah, just a, I mean, and he's he's had a couple of spectacular catches, um, you know, in 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 the OTAs, and, and you know, you, you've seen it, and you're like, wow, like, you know, and then you you have the coaching, you know, the expert level coaching, and and T Martin and, and Keith Williams, you can only expect that this guy will reach any untapped potential. You know, we might not have seen the best of him even in college yet. So getting this type of extra level coaching is definitely going to pay dividends when it comes down to the season. Um, of course, he'll have time in, in the preseason and training camp as well um, to prove that he can make this roster. But if, he, if you've seen, I mean, I, I have all the confidence in the world that he will. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they brought in Tyler Huntley last year, you know, one of one, good friends with Lamar. And, you know, even if it meant for him to be on a practice squad, which he was, he eventually got a shot in the Bills game in the Jacksonville game, and he proved his stay. Now, you know, it's that competition at that number two spot. So it shows that if you're patient enough and you're willing to, you know, stick it out, <laughs> as they would say, you know, st- we're willing to stick it out. I think that there's an opportunity for you, and, and I think Lamar has definitely played a big part in that. Well, you have to I, – I, I like the fact that the Ravens trust Lamar and ask Lamar. Like, I remember they asked him, what receiver do you want? He said, give me Jerry Judy or Hollywood. Well, they drafted mm-hmm. Hollywood right away, and of course, they never had a chance to get Jerry Judy. He went way before we picked. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the quarterback is more than just a player. He should have some input. You want your quarterback to be as uh, have as much ownership and input without stepping over the lines. But the great thing about Lamar is he's not a selfish player. He wants to win, and that's the only thing that comes out of his mouth. So Lamar has the team's best interest in his heart as well as his uh, the offense as a whole. Um, Getting back to Victor one one more time, uh, the thing that I like about him is that if you're not going to be a top first couple or a day one or a day two draft pick, you need to have – he ran a 4-6. You need to have a special talent. And with Victor, he has that. Um, the special talent he has, as we mentioned, is going up, getting the ball, playing strong. He has good body control. I saw on the sidelines. So if you're talking about – a a third and eight, and you want to throw it to the sidelines, maybe the clock, you know, want to save some clock game situations. Mm-hmm. Like Victor has a role exactly. that he could potentially carve out that really we don't have from the wide receiver group overall. No, we have, I mean, I mean you've seen it, you know, you, you know that, I mean, the, all, the knock has been for us is that our wide receivers are horrible and we, we can't develop them, you know, just guys not understanding the situation at hand. And like I said, you can tell that, Coaching makes a big difference. Um, coaching makes a big difference, and you just see a different energy with these guys. So I can only expect that, you know, guys are going to learn from each other, um, build build a great deal of chemistry having a full offseason, you know, because last year, I mean, coming into the Giants, he didn't really have a full offseason. He didn't have preseason. He didn't really have too many opportunities to prove that he can, you know, what he can do. And now with a full offseason, he definitely has – all the opportunities allotted to ensure his spot on this team. You know, if he, you know, works hard, improves himself, and just does, you know, what the team asks him to do. And I feel like he'll do a great job at that. You know, when I look back at it, Knox, I was kind of surprised he didn't get a chance to play with the Giants last year because, you know, you just mentioned it and it just made me think of all the injuries that they had on exactly. that to that group. Like, uh, was the Sterling Shepard was hurt, Slayton was hurt. Uh, for a while, it was like all they had was Golden Tate. Um, he, I think he missed time. But in any case, surprised that Victor didn't stay there and at least get a shot there. I mean, that's a young receiver with size. Um, you can't teach size. You can teach the other things that you're talking about. So I wanted to move on and, and ask you, um, how would you handicap this last receiver spot? Now, the Ravens traditionally keep six receivers. So just to go over it off the top of your head, you got Hollywood. You got Sammy. You got Bateman, you got Duvernay, you got Tylen Wallace. That's five. So you have one more mm-hmm. spot, presumably, uh, presumably, between Prochet, Boykin, and your guy Victor. So, how do you handicap that, and how is Victor going to separate himself among that group? I think Victor, like we 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 alluded to earlier, is that you have a full off season, and you have preseason, and you have training camp. And, you know, what better assessment to go against the best secondary in the league, you know, in ours in training camp and then be tested out against other teams. And not to mention that you do have a joint practice with the Carolina Panthers who has J.C. Horn over there, uh, Jeremy Chin, uh, an, 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 a decent, a nice secondary as well. So 
you'll have plenty of opportunities for guys to prove themselves. I think um, Proche, you know, is definitely another guy who, you know, unfortunately didn't get uh, too many chances to prove himself as well. So you got two guys that didn't really have a chance to really prove themselves yet. And then you got a guy that has been on the team that's for a while and had, you know, chances after chances after chances in Boykin. And, you know, it's just it, it, it hasn't really fared out too well for him. Um, you know, we've seen flashes. We've it's, his, play is, his play has been kind of spotty, um, not really is too consistent. So, you know, I, I would take the guys with the high upside. So even if it does mean that, you know, if Benjamin Victor has to take the Tyler Huntley route, which is, you know, being on the practice squad, and and you keep Proche as the 53, I would I would love to see a just situation like that. And, um, you know, I mean, of course, I, I, I like Boykin, and, you know, coming out of college. I mean, what would we all seen? But, you know, I just don't I, I don't I don't see it. You know, I just, I just don't see it uh, right now, whereas though I can assure you that he would be the sixth guy. And, you know, even with that special team ability, you know, I, I still I still wouldn't assure that. I mean, just because he has more time, he had more time to prove himself. And these guys, you know, they have a lot more opportunities to prove himself, a lot more room. And they, for they actually have extra time too, Knox, which can be, yeah. which can be a, a tiebreaker. Like, uh, just mm-hmm. for instance, on the defensive line, you got Jelly Ellis, who's a one-year guy, but then you have some undrafted young guys who you could potentially control for four years. So Boykin right. was drafted in 2019, so he's already had two. He only has two more guaranteed with the Ravens. I think that actually works against him. And to be honest with you, Knox, and you know this, for, we talk off air all the time, but uh, I have some definite opinions on Boykin and, and Proche in that battle. So I'll keep most of them under wraps for now, I guess. But <laughs> let's just say that uh, for Boykin, the mistakes are there. Um, the advanced stats showing that he is open more than there's a video on YouTube that a buddy of mine, Jim Zipcode, made, uh, basically showing times where he thought Boykin was open. But the thing is, he doesn't command that respect. The chemistry isn't there. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of times, Boykin even admitted he's not running the right routes. Uh, a lot of times, Boykin's getting bullied towards the sidelines. So you say, oh, that throw was inaccurate. Well, yeah, because it had to be five yards out of bounds. Because you can't, <laughs> you, you can't trust right. that he's going right. to find the ball and fight for the ball. So... I'm a Proche guy. I think James Proche has the upside to play at least two of the receiver positions. You could put him in Z or you could put him anywhere in the slot. Um, I love his route running, and I think that the addition of Coach Williams is is just going to elevate Proche's game. But uh, Boykin definitely has the inside track. As you know, Knox, we talked about this. If you're not in the starting receiver group, the top three or four, then special teams is a tiebreaker, and Boykin yeah. definitely has the uh, advantage there. So, is there anything else that you can think of that um, that, that you can give me on Victor here? Because we're we're running out of time here on this video. Uh, I mean, not much. I mean, I just you know wish him the best of luck, and I I trust that you know with the new expertise of the the coaches with their uh, insight and their um, resume that they'll accurately assess you know who who deserves who, and I can guarantee you that whoever's on that team deserved it and earned it. You know, so that's that's pretty much what I can say. Whoever earned it, you know, earned it. And that's one of the reasons it's going to make for a really interesting preseason because, yeah, the offense is going to be vanilla, but we'll get a chance to see who can win one-on-one. And if Victor's right. constantly moving this uh, or winning one-on-one battles with this vanilla offense, that's going to be a good sign. So we'll see how the wide receivers progress. And uh, I really appreciate you coming on and, and talking to me about Benjamin Victor. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. All right, buddy. We'll talk to you again. Thanks, Knox. All right. Appreciate you, Jason. Thanks for your time, man.